Are you trying to figure out how to install a Minecraft server on top of Linux? Well, I'm Dom Pizzette, Edutainer at IT Pro TV, and in this Linux how-to, I'm going to show you how it's done. Getting a Minecraft server up and running on Linux isn't very hard, but there are some prerequisites we have to meet to get it done, and that can be a little bit tricky. So let's walk through the process. The first thing we need to do is we need to download the Minecraft server application. And you can do that right from Minecraft.net. If you just do a Google search for download Minecraft server, you'll be linked right here to this page. It is the Minecraft Java Edition server, and you'll see some basic information in here, but what I'm looking for is this line that says download Minecraft server, and then whatever the current version happens to be. It is a .jar file, J-A-R, that stands for Java Archive, because this is a Java application. So I'm just gonna click on that to download it, and you'll see a save file dialog. I'll go ahead and save that. That's gonna save that onto my hard drive in my downloads folder. From here, I can drop to my terminal. So let me just get into the terminal. And in the terminal, if I switch into the downloads folder, I should see that Minecraft server application sitting right there. And it's conveniently renamed that to just server.jar to save me a little bit of typing. Uh, I didn't do that, it did that automatically as part of the download. So I can now take that server.jar and in theory launch Minecraft. But it's actually not gonna work right now because I'm missing a few things. Specifically, I'm missing Java, which is kind of an important piece. If you run Java-version, it's not uncommon to find that your Linux box does not have Java installed. So we need to get that added. And there's a few other quality of life things that I like to add as well. So I'm gonna install Java by typing sudo apt install and then the name of the Java uh, instance that I want. Now, if you're on a Red Hat or Debian based system, you would type sudo dnf install. On Debian, Ubuntu, and Linux Mint, you would type sudo apt. So a little variation there, but otherwise it's the same. And I want to install the openjdk-8-jdk. -dash -dash -jdk. Uh, so that's the Java development kit version eight. So I want to install that. I'm also going to install another little utility called Biobu, B-Y-O-B-U. It's not actually required, but Biobu will help to keep the Minecraft server running in the background, even if you get out of your, uh, your session. So I'm going to do a dash Y just so it'll install those. I'll punch in my password and it's going to install those two packages. And those are coming from Canonical. They're official packages so we can trust them uh, and they'll update with our system as our system gets updated. When that's done, I should have Java, and I can verify that by running java-version, and I should see that Java is installed and functional. Now, the next step is I can't just run the, uh, I can't just run the Minecraft server app because I need to agree to the terms of service. But this is a com command line utility, so I don't have a wizard like normal. So to get around that, I need to create a end user license agreement file that says I agree to the terms of the license. And the easiest way to do that is to use the echo command. I'm gonna say echo, and then what I'm gonna echo is EULA equals true. And then after that, I'll do greater than, greater than, and I'll specify eula.txt. That's gonna create a text file called eula.txt, and inside of it, it's gonna have the line that just says eula equals true. And that way, Minecraft will know that I've accepted the end user license agreement. Once that's in place, we're ready to run. So from here, in order to launch the Minecraft server, we can normally just invoke Java and have it launch the Minecraft server. But before I do that, I'm going to run Biobu. Biobu is going to drop me into a slightly different shell that will stay running even if I disconnect from the server. So I want my Minecraft server to stay running, so that's why I'm adding in this extra little step. Then from here, I can actually invoke Java. So I'm going to do sudo, and well, actually, I don't have to run this as administrator. I just run it as my regular user, so I don't necessarily have to run uh, sudo. But I'll do Java dash, and then Minecraft requires a little bit more memory than a lot of applications, so I'm going to bump up the virtual memory by doing dash capital X, lowercase m, lowercase x, 1024, and a capital M. So that's going to give it up to a gig of memory. And then I will do the same thing for the XMS setting. So dash capital X, lowercase m, lowercase s, 1024m. And then dash jar, I'm calling a Java archive. And then the name of the archive, in my case, it is server.jar. 
And then lastly, I'm going to say no GUI. It actually does have a graphical user interface that's very basic, but on a server, a lot of times we don't have the GUI installed, and so we're going to run it without that graphical user interface. When I run that, the server is going to execute, and it's going to fire up. Now, one of the first lines you're going to see is a failure to find a file, server.properties. Don't worry about that. The file doesn't exist, and so it has to create that the first time that it runs. In fact, a lot of what you're about to see, if we jump back to my screen, you'll see all these percentage signs and so on. This is all initial stuff, the first time you fire up the server. If you stop the server and start it again, these don't come up the second time around. It's just all part of the initial setup. If I scroll back to the beginning, you'll see that, that error where it couldn't find server.properties, but then it moved on just fine, and that's okay. That file is now created, and it's built the world, and it's up and running. Now, from here, I've got a couple of choices. I may just leave the server running, and that's it. Walk away, and that's the end of the day. But if I want to turn the server off, then all I need to do is type stop. And when I type stop and press enter, that will shut the server down. It'll save everything that it was working on, and now I'm done. And I can relaunch the server just by running that same command that we ran before. I'm going to tap up on my keyboard uh, to bring that command back. And when I run it, it's going to relaunch that server and bring it back up again. Another thing I could have done, because I'm running Biobu, this session can stay running in the background. Uh, when I relaunch, notice I didn't get the error about server.properties and I didn't get all that respawning message. All that's already done, it's up, and it's ready to go. If I press F6 on my keyboard, when I press F6, see how it says detached instead of exited? Everything is still running in the background. And so now my Minecraft server is up and going, but I can use my desktop however I want. And if I ever want to take a look at that server again, I can just come right back here and run Biobu. And when I run that, I'm right back in, and there's my Minecraft server. So getting a Minecraft server up and running under Linux, not too hard. We just have a couple little hoops we have to jump through, and then the server is up and running. Thanks for watching this Linux how-to video. Check out the playlist below for more Linux videos. And don't forget to subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel.